watching Hello Africa. There's more to her sweet smile than what meets the eyes. Nigeria's DJ Cuppy has played at hundreds of prestigious events both home and abroad. Beyond her girly giggles is a business-savvy go-getter honing her proudly Nigerian brand. We sat down for a chat where she shared her journey to success. There's so many different aspects to my brand. So of course, I'm a DJ. I mean, that's my profession, a DJ producer. But also a massive part of me is being a student as well. So I currently go to New York University and I'm doing a master's in music business. So this is so interesting for me because it's not a typical, I guess, artist route of doing things. And, you know, it definitely challenges me in different ways. But I have to say overall, I think it helps me be a well-rounded creative because I'm getting inspiration from different aspects as well. Wow. <laughs> so having said that, I mean, you know, there's times when I'm, I'm in a gig and backstage I'm working on an essay. It's crazy, but I love it. I love my job. And, you know, I've been told when you do what you love, you never have to work a day in your life. And I think definitely being a DJ is a great example of that. I like the way you do the body. I like the way you do the body. I like the way you do the body. You touched on a lot of great, interesting points. So I want to narrow down your business acumen. So as a DJ, you are the life of the party, you're the CEO of the party. And as a CEO, entrepreneur of your business, you are at the helm of your company. Yes. How has your company evolved? Like, what is it like to really, like, um, maintain and grow a DJ business? That's so interesting. And it's something that I think has changed over time. I think now you're seeing that DJs and producers are getting the kind of recognition I feel like they've always deserved. Um, especially back home in Nigeria, whereby, you know, it was really about the vocal artists. Um, but I'm so lucky to have come in in a time where people are more open-minded and now there's an economics to music. So for me, you know, a big part of my project has been branding. You have to essentially grow something that has value. That's why you see, you know, international DJs now, you know, it's, it's about the music, but it's also about the brand. Um, and, you know, I think that my brand is one that is very sort of versatile. I think it's one that's very refreshing. I think I represent a new generation and a lot of women as well um, and it's very interesting because you know when I'm looking at my business and I, I, I you know I have great management and I've started a company called Red Velvet Music Group and you know we work with management and we're hoping to go into production and you know eventually into publishing and it's something that I think I'm growing as a DJ but also like you said as a businesswoman as well so I'm sort of learning as I'm going and I'm really you know my passion is really in taking Nigeria taking Africa with me everywhere I go. My country, I no go lie. People have really warmed up to the spotlight on Africa and I think that, um, you know, that this is a great time to be an advocate for the continent. Absolutely. Now, you were born and raised in Lagos. Like, you're a Lagos Omo girl. Niger. <laughs> like, straight. But yes. you've actually spent a lot of time in the UK and obviously in America. Yes. So let's take it back to the UK because you graduated from King's College London. Yes degree in business management, yes. I don't think a lot of people realize um, helps, you know, actually propel your business forward. You know, I can't tell you how important education is. It is really, really, I have to say, it's the reason I've been able to become so disciplined in my craft. Mm. And it's also the reason that I've been able to, you know, understand priorities and understand really the business side of music. Because it's great being an artist, but you want to, you want to have something that you leave behind. Mm. And I want to open the door for other, you know, other females or even just young people in Africa trying to follow their dreams. Um, and I think traditionally when we look at the continent, you know, a lot of parents are telling their kids, okay, don't go for a creative lead, do something that, you know, be a doctor, be a lawyer. But I feel like I'm a great example of how you can follow your dreams, have a creative aspect in your life and still be educated. And I always say knowledge is power. And, you know, I'm hoping to, so I'm currently on my second degree in a master's and there's prospects of maybe a PhD. I don't know, we'll PhD. see. PhD! <laughs> Copy! <laughs> wow!
confident and outspoken. Nigeria's DJ Cuppy is the eldest daughter to oil billionaire Femi Otedola. With music, she made an unlikely career choice. Her parents, however, were instrumental to that decision. I went through some of your old interviews, yes. and um, one of the things that really made me smile was your um, your thoughts about like balancing and how do you um, prioritize some of the things that you're working on. And one quote in particular made me smile, and you said you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Yes. How has that like helped you as far as like um, prioritizing and balancing all your many projects? I think that you know. The most important thing is doing something that's passion driven. I have days where, you know, I have a lot on my plate and, you know, it's not exactly a walk in the park trying to get everything done. And because I'm an international brand, I have operations in Nigeria, in London, and also now in the US which, you know, can be very, very sort of hectic at times. And of course, you know, I'm lucky because I get to travel as well for work. I get to go to Dubai, Mexico, all these sorts of things. But you're right, logistic wise, it's sometimes a nightmare. But, you know, again, having school for me has been such an important part of it because I've learned to really sort of, I've learned to meet deadlines. You know, sometimes I can't say I get enough sleep <laughs> compared to the average human. But, you know, when it's all passion driven, it's all worth it. And for me, you know, you know, there's something about getting on the decks, I just sort of zone out and you know I sort of forget about everything. It's almost like my job is like a way of healing myself mm. because it takes me back to why I started doing it in the first place. It's so easy to get caught up in you know in all the other stuff um, and there's a lot of things going on when you're building a brand uh, and it's easy to sometimes lose focus on what matters which is the music. Yeah now let's talk about music because at a really young age um, I'm not sure if it was your mother or someone in your family helped you or at least encouraged you. Yeah. Yes. and playing the piano. Yes. Now, how did that all start? I mean, was it like a proper encouragement where you're like, look, you're going to play the piano <laughs> and you're going to like it and you're going to, you know, really evolve in, into being like a musician or something within the music industry? Like, yeah. It's, how much of a support or encouragement did your parents provide you? And It's so interesting. So I grew up in a, you know, I grew up in Lagos, which is such a, such a creative, like, I mean, the amount of content that, that city just pushes is amazing. Everywhere you look, there's there's movies. It's just you're soaking in so much information. So I think being around that, you know, as a child, I mean, I used to listen to Fela in the car with my dad, and you know, having that sort of, I guess, that way of expressing myself from a very young age. My parents noticed that I, you know, I was one. I was more of a creative and. So, you know, instead of channeling, channeling that into sitting down watching music videos, you know, my mom, who's so supportive, came up with the idea of me having piano lessons. Um, and, you know, so I... What is she seeing you for her to say, you know what, is it just... I literally couldn't stop singing. I couldn't stop listening to music. I was like a sponge. I would hear a song in the background of a shop and go home and sing it. You know, it was, it was almost like some sort of weird um, hit talent I had for absorbing music. I, I, was, I mean, and I was like sick singing fella songs. I had no idea what they meant. Wow. So I think my parents were like, oh wow, okay, we need to make sure that this is being channeled somewhere. Yes. And you know, I always say I'm so lucky. I feel like the luckiest girl in the world because I have the most supportive parents in the world. <laughs> How has Mama Cups, Papa <laughs> Cups, all your siblings yes. helped you along the way? Because it's not easy this road that you've taken and the road that you plan ahead. Yes, and I push myself and interesting enough, you know, Yes, I have supportive parents, but they're also sometimes my biggest critics. Mm. You know, I mean, in the beginning when I would have my dad sort of say, hmm, Cuppy, that mix was a bit off. You know, he literally, Are you kidding he's, there, me? he's there taking notes, I know. It's crazy, but you know, I remember when I decided to DJ, he said, if you want to do this, you've got to be the best. So I always have them pushing me to be a better version mm. of myself. It is a lot of pressure. Um, but, you know, is this pressure that you put on yourself or is it that it's, Oh, yeah, I mean, it's a bit of pressure from them. And ask any Nigerian, we have a very competitive society. Yes. And one, I think it's healthy. It's great because parents want to see their children flourishing, mm. want to see their children doing better than them, mm. you know, learning from their mistakes. And I think that my parents really, they see my potential, so they push me. Because as you're, you know,
know, as your um, as your parents are raising you and guiding you through this process at a really young age, um, at what point did you decide to study business management and not music, or maybe even just pursue music straight? Yes. Um, well, it's interesting because people always ask me, if you weren't DJing, what would you be doing? I would probably be an oil trader. I mean, I'm wow. very, very interested in uh, in what my family is involved in the business, mm. and I believe that it's something that you know I would have been great at, and I can still be great at. But it's something that obviously came second for me to music. But um, for my parents and for myself, it was so important to have a degree that was solid and something that I can fall back on. Mm. Everybody knows the music industry is very, very volatile. And you know, it's so important to sort of, you know, I mean, I'm gonna do music as long as I live because I love it. It's so important to have, you know, diverse, have diverse skills. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, especially being from Nigeria and being from, you know, from a family where there's entrepreneurs at every yeah. corner. You know, for me, it was so important to be well informed in, you know, in business because I, even if, I mean, even even with my business, I the way I go about my brand is very, very well calculated and strategic, mm. which are some aspects I learned from school, studying business at school. So, you know, definitely I wanted to get this first degree mm -hmm. and now I have the option to, and I, I am doing it, I'm doing a master's in music business. So, mm -hmm. uh, and I can say, you know, with a lot of my peers in school, having that, Having that business economics degree definitely gives me um, a step ahead. Absolutely. I'm now uh, also a contributor for Forbes Africa. I'm no excited. kidding. So I'll be Congratulations. running. Congratulations. Thank you. This is yeah new. I'll be running their entertainment segment. Wow. <laughs> so I'm now also a writer. <laughs> and a writer. So I mean, I'm going to take it back to your father because he obviously had a really great influence over your career. I'm curious to know, how do you feel personally, you, uh, DJ Cuppy or Florence, um, when people say, oh, you're the daughter, you know, of Femi Otedola, and they kind of lace it with a lot of like power and privilege. Like, how does that make you feel as a businesswoman and mm. even someone on, you know, um, as an individual who wants to make their own mark have made their own mark. Yes. Like, how does that make you feel when you hear that? Like, you know, I get that a lot, and it's something that you know is something that I've almost become used to. Uh, unfortunately, I think that it's so important, and I always say this to people: in life, people are given opportunities. So I always say, opportunity meets preparation, and it's all about execution. So we all have platforms. Some may be big, some may be small, but it's all about how you execute and. You know, I like to, I like to, I like to believe, and I know that if um, if my brand and my skill was based on my father, there's no way I would be able to open the doors or, or get as far as I have. Mm. You know, and I always say to people, most people that say that are also people that haven't heard me play. And you know, it's so sad because in society, you know, we all are guilty of um, sort of prejudging people. Um, but you know, it's so it's so interesting. I always say, let the music speak for itself. Yeah. <laughs> They're looking for me And I can hear them screaming Yeah, yeah You're interesting and also unique because you have your Nigerian culture and background. You went to school during your formative years in London, yes. and now that you're here in the United States, how has the, your exposure to all these different cultures helped develop you? You know, it's so interesting. It's made me such a, I think, it's made me overall a very open-minded person. Mm -hmm. So, you know, leaving, uh, leaving Nigeria when I was about 11 years old, spending eight or so years in London has really sort of put me in the middle of both cultures. And then now moving to New York, I'm learning so much about this environment and this culture here. So, I mean, they sort of say once, if you can live in New York, you can live anywhere. anywhere. I say, if you can live in Lagos, ah, you can, you can live true. anywhere. It's true. So I feel like having Lagos, London, New York sort of, you know, in my pocket, having lived there at the age of 22, I've really put myself in a great position to explore anywhere else in the world. That's fantastic. I mean, and even as an international DJ, Dubai, um, uh, all over Paris. Europe, Mexico, yes. Yeah. And, and I mean, I'm about to have exciting news. Uh, sure. 10 more, <laughs> yeah, I'm about to have 10 more countries under my belt. Uh, I'm so excited. I will be going on tour this summer. Um, I'll be doing 10 countries in Africa. Wow. And um, it's exciting. 10 countries in four weeks. <laughs> 10 countries in four weeks. That sounds pretty intense. It's very intense. 
<laughs> well, let me ask you because you've been doing business in all these different um, places around the world. Yeah. And in the United States, anyway, we live in a time where race relations are becoming a, a, a real issue and a topic of discussion. What has been your experience globally as far as um, maybe discrimination or racism and how have you handled that? You know, for me, it's not only sometimes racial, it's also essentially there's a lot of sexism as well. Mm. So, you know, I've had times when I've gone to go and DJ and I'm sort of at the door and they're like, oh, oh you're a guest. So, you know, I'm sort of like, oh, I'm the DJ, I'm the guest DJ. And they're like, oh, really? Wow. You know, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of assumptions as well, you know, so um, I've had people, I've been booked for a couple of shows where, you know, maybe it's a, a certain kind of sound um, and, you know, like I, I've, I've done a sort of, I guess it was more like um, a South American salsa show mm -hmm. and, um, you know, I sort of go to the booth and the DJ before me is like, oh, yeah, this is not a hip hop party. You know, and so little things like that, or little things like um, when I when I had a male manager, they would always only talk to him. You know, wow. so it's you know these are things I experience, and especially I would say moving to the US, these are things I'm more aware of as mm -hmm. well. Um, and you know, also there's uh, it's great. My whole team is basically female mm -hmm. now, so it's great because I feel like it's. I actually, just from my own experiences, I now feel very passionate to use my brand mm. um, and my journey to empower women. Wow. You know, I think it's something that is, you know, especially being an African woman mm. um, in a male dominated industry, yeah. it's something that is, I, 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 I face challenges all the time, but I'm constantly trying to break walls. This is great. I feel like I want a part two of this segment. Um, <laughs> but I know you have to go. You're heading to London now. We Tonight, really appreciate yep. your time. Thank you. One of the great things that we do on the show is to say goodnight to our viewers. Oh. Um, and we like to know, like, what's your bedtime or what's your good night regimen? So just share with us some of the things that you do as you prepare to go to bed and wish our viewers good night. Well, when I go to sleep, I like to take off my makeup, turn off my phone, tie my hair up um, and I also like to reflect on my day I think it's very important you know to sort of I guess look at how things went and think about how maybe sometimes situations could have been handled differently and before I sleep I also like to take a prayer and you know sort of count my blessings and hope for maybe sometimes a better day so good night guys from DJ Cuppy Mwah.